Workers' Party GB had released a video earlier, and it will sort of give you an introduction to Lauren as well. So let me just stick this on, and I'll, I'll have her on immediately after only about three minutes, I think, this video. Two and a half minutes. Here we go. Hi everyone, so we've just finished up the No More War rally in, uh, in Whitehall in London today, and I've just grabbed Peter Ford, who was one of the speakers at today's event. Uh, Peter was a former British ambassador to Syria, and he's been very outspoken in opposing uh, NATO's escalation of the war in, in Ukraine. It is very difficult to get any kind of uh, assembly hall and any platform. None of the political parties are <laughs> peace parties. Not not one of the parties in Westminster at the moment is a peace party. You can have war, more war, or most war. Yep. That is no choice. Yep. So we're here today, and the people bravely gathered said, we do have a choice. We do not have to be involved in this conflict. It's not Britain's fight. Yeah. And I think that question of, you know, democracy is like something that's come up quite a few times in the speeches today because, you know, we're told we live in a democracy. We get to we get to vote for who we uh, ha have represented in Parliament, but it's not a real democracy if all the options are the same, is it? Exactly. It's authoritarianism. We, we among the... The, there is no peace party. There is the Workers' Party outside Parliament, yep. which is the closest thing we have. But in the Westminster establishment, and they crowd out all, all uh, opposing voices. That is not democracy. It is not freedom of speech when there is no freedom to be heard. We do not have freedom to be heard. Yep. That's why your role is so important and assemblies like today yeah at least we can have a word on the street yeah and i think well we we've had to take to the streets haven't we because there's not many places we're actually free to assemble these days you know some views apparently are not allowed to be heard inside four walls only out in the uh out in the street but um mm -hmm. you know we're so glad that we're invited along today and that there's voices from across the political spectrum, because that's the only way that we can actually, you know, stand up to, to those in power. Exactly. And there are very few people uh, like George Galloway, a, a known figure, yep. a former MP, willing to speak up for the cause of, of peace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Peter, and thank you for speaking. I thought you speak you. great. Um, I'm sure we'll speak again soon. There you go. So on the show now, this is uh, Lauren. Welcome, Lauren, to the show. How are you? Whether you Sean, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Sorry, I forget. Uh, what what is your uh, actual role in the party? Are you uh, one of the uh, statutory officers, or or some or or something as important uh, a title to it? What what is your? Do you want to introduce yourself just quickly to the audience, quickly? Yeah, sure. So my name's Lauren. Um, you can probably tell I'm you know from Australia, not Britain, um, but live in uh, Britain now. I'm a uh, member and. Party of Britain uh, yeah. and have been for a bit over two years now, um, based in Birmingham. Um, I was enjoying those clips that you were showing just before I came on because actually my first sort of activity in the Workers' Party was to organise an anti-LTN rally here in uh, in Birmingham in Kings Heath. Um, so very happy to give my opinion on these kind of ULEZ and uh, clean air zone and, um, you know, LTN road closure kind of things. Cause I mean, we think they're ridiculous. Yeah. I was going to say, what's, what's your, what's your opinion on, um, like organizations such as, uh, just stop oil and extinction rebellion. And, you know, do you agree with what they're doing at the moment in central London with their, with their days of action? Like what, what's your, what's your opinion on all of that? Do you have like a, not just you as well, your personal opinion, but also the, I mean, is there, is there some kind of environmental policy for the Workers' Party, et cetera, and stuff like that? Um, I mean, we don't have a, a party opinion or position on these groups exactly. Uh, my personal opinion is that I think their actions and their activities are harmful to the working class and they'd be better off directing them at those in power, those who are the biggest polluters, if this is the, the policy that they want to sort of oppose. Um, I have a sort of different view on climate change you know to to some of the members in the party um and so you know i'm i'm against these groups in general although i mean i, I had a good chat with david clues about this on saturdays that you know i do see myself as an environmentalist i want clean air clean water 
you know, the way that we achieve these things isn't to shut down roads, isn't to increase taxes on working people. It's yeah. to have a, a planned economy where, you know, uh, production is operating in the interests of the environment, the interests of the working people, rather than, you know, uh, rampant pollution, you know, war, which is the biggest polluter on earth, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's quite something. I don't like you say. I don't think it's getting people on side by blocking traffic, especially from the working class people who probably need their jobs and obviously need to earn money especially if it's like a, a long distance driver who needs to be there specific, you know, there's all regulations around, um, you know, what time, you know, their, their sleeping patterns and when, when they have to get to certain uh, points. It's not exactly when I, I've never, it, it's bizarre to me. I've never un understood why people think it's good to block traffic. Do you know what I mean? I think, like, or I, I just don't understand that logic. Sorry, go on, go for it. I was going to say, I've spoken to some activists who, you know, do this kind of direct action. And um, I think in their view, it's, you know, anything that gets attention, anything that gets media attention is furthering their cause because it puts it in the, in the front of the public and it spreads their message wider. But um, I think the reason that they get public attention is not because, you know, they're um, of their tactics, but because their, their message basically is one that's held by you know the ruling elite of our society um and it's in the interest of our mainstream media to to spread this message um and i think that their tactics are you know do alienate the working class i mean the last thing you want when you're sitting in traffic trying to get to you know your shit job where you're not paid enough to actually like put your heating on and feed your family you don't yep. want to get on the motorway you know for two hours because some you know old guys like glued himself to the road i know i, I, I know i know they say they say there's no such thing as good as as bad publicity but i don't think that's actually true like you know what i mean like there is such thing as bad publicity because all of the rags all of the mainstream rags they're all quite i mean I, i've never seen a positive like i've never seen an article ever even from whether it's the guardian whether it's the daily mail whether it is i've never seen a positive uh, uh, like story about isn't it wonderful like like <laughs> like this group's blocked all of this traffic. Like, isn't it wonderful? Like, it's, it, it, there is such thing as bad publicity, you know, regardless of what that, what that, what that, what that saying is. And I just don't understand because I, I generally think that you know all of these groups such as XR, um, just stop oil. I, I I generally think that there is big multinational corporations behind it. Um, mm -hmm. They have unlimited money, so it doesn't really matter how they behave or what they do. These groups. They'll always have the money. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, and and because of that, they don't operate in a competitive market as such. If you know what I mean, in the sense that if we do something bad, the people <laughs> will punish us by not supporting us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how you learn. It's almost like a business. You know, that's how you learn. Okay, we better not sell this product or sell this service because no one likes it. And if we keep selling this service or selling this product, we're going to go out of business. That's sort of the same with all of these organizations, yeah. But yet, but yet, because they're paid, they get big donations from oil tycoons and you know whoever else, yeah. They yeah. they don't operate in that kind of competitive landscape. So it doesn't matter what they do; they will always get the money, and that's what I mean. It's like I've never seen a positive spin on the whole blocking traffic kind of. Uh, method do you know what i mean like, I, I just don't i don't i don't quite understand it um but anyway uh lauren tell us about tell us about the the work the workers party in general please please do like when it came about uh it's, it's a fairly new party isn't it i remember um george galloway he's your he's the leader of it isn't he and he made an announcement but you want to tell us more about it if you wouldn't mind yeah absolutely so um the party formed uh before i joined but um the end of 2019 sort of after the collapse of the jeremy corbyn sort of leadership of the labor party um you know we really wanted to harness some of that energy that was geared towards jeremy corbyn and some of his you know more uh her, some of his policies that were more geared towards you know the working class and peace and that kind of thing um obviously we know that none of those things will ever happen within the Labour Party because, you know, they um, they will oppose, the party in general will oppose it at every turn. So um, the party started end of 2019. 
Um, we have a 10 point program, which um, you can find on our website. Um, mm -hmm. we are a socialist party and, um, you know, we're, we're not like a lot of the other socialist parties that you've encountered. I saw your, your video on the socialist workers party and, um, oh, yes. what, what do you think of the socialist workers party? Yeah, then not not for me. Not a big fan. Um, <laughs> go on, continue. Sorry, go on. They give a lot of socialists a, a bad name, really, because I think a lot of people are confused about what what that actually means. And I guess just to sort of put it as succinctly as I can is that you know we understand that we live in a class society, which means you know there are people who work for a living, and then there are people who don't have to work for a living because they own corporations and they live off the backs of other people's hard work basically and um we think that's unfair and we don't want that to be the case we think that the spoils of society should be shared amongst all especially those who work for it um and we want society to be run in the interest of the majority rather than you know a small ruling elite um you know we don't think that everyone should be sitting around on benefits and you know that kind of thing which i think a lot of people think is, is our the sort of socialist belief, but we want everyone to be in work, be contributing to society and also be able to pay their bills and live a, a happy, enjoyable life um, and we want peace. So I think, you know, a lot of people will agree, <laughs> agree that that's a good aim. Um, and so uh, that's the, the general sort of principle of, of the party. We have a, our 10-point program, as I mentioned, and um, point number one of that 10 points is uh, Britain's withdrawal of NATO um, and an end to, you know, imperialist wars because, you know, it's not in the interests of working people of this country to be involved in war. It's in the interest of our ruling elite. And um, I think that's one thing that is is so central to our belief is that, you know, our interests are diametrically opposed to the interests of those in power you know your bill gates your jeff bezos your joe biden hillary clinton etc we don't have anything in common really and um if they want something it's probably you know in our not in our interests and if we want something it's not going to be in their interests and so that's you know those classes you know uh it can't be reconciled and so well yeah. ultimately we we want to replace them in power and have the working class in power deciding uh, its own fate. <coughs> yeah, I mean, um, that, I mean, I'm totally on board with obviously leaving NATO, and I've, you know, I've always. It's, it's funny because, like, I mean, I'm personally like a libertarian. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a socialist um, uh, personally. You know, so I, I'm not more because. No, I always believe that that kind of this is just me personally. It's not me trying to uh, debate that socialism, but I always feel as though that socialism leads to that kind of nanny state. It's just like a natural kind of result of it. If you know what I mean, that sort of nanny state authoritarianism. But that's just that's just my opinion to it. But saying that, I've always highly respected uh, George Gadaway personally. I think the stuff he did in he was the one that actually set me on a path to being uh political you know in that in that really like waking up in a way and i i didn't properly probably wake up till really about 2016 but i remember seeing galloway in the early 2000s or mid 2000s yeah. I think it was mid 2000s when he went to the u.s senate when they summoned him and yeah. i remember watching that in my school uniform in my secondary school uniform watching this live on tv i remember thinking wow even as like a young man like a teenager I remember thinking, wow, this is like amazing. You know, he's just put these guys because before him, before that speech he gave in, in the US Senate, I was generally a person that was totally radicalized by the propaganda of we got to get the terrorists. You know, we got to mm -hmm. spread freedom to the Middle East. You know, like this, this nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be like, yeah, it's great that we have troops over in Iraq, you know, at the time or an Afghan mm -hmm. after. You know, it, it, that's wonderful. And then I saw what this guy was saying, George Galloway, and I went, "Wow, I get, I get it now." You know, I get what this guy. So he was actually the first person that put me on a path to. Um, no, I've met, I've met George as well. I went, I went to the. You were at the event, wasn't it? Were you up on stage during the No to NATO event? I was actually there in the front row. I was actually live streaming it. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I could, I couldn't stay all day. 
I had to yeah. go. I had to be. I had to be somewhere else. So I had to leave halfway through. Unfortunately, just before um, that chap Loki, the rapper guy, spoke, yeah. uh, I had to leave just before then, which is unfortunate. But but George Galloway, I mean, I, I, you know, probably economically is where we would disagree. But in yeah. terms of um, anti-war, you know, uh, pro-freedom yeah. kind of stances, I would definitely be on board with. You know, I, I occasionally do listen to uh, Galloway. On his YouTube channel as well, so and he was he was quite badly treated, wasn't he? But he was one of the because we got a guy who works with us called Anthony Weber on UNN here. He was a regular contributor to RT, you know, Russia Today, and he yeah. was just gone, you know, because he obviously got rid of the whole thing, RT UK, and that's why yeah. he works now with us on UNN. Like, what happened with? Uh, I know it's obviously you're you're speaking on for someone else now, but. I don't know whether George has spoken to you or whatever about it, but what happened with him? With because he got listed as what was it on his Twitter? Is it still there to this day? The uh, Russian state media. Yeah, state is, media. is that yeah. still there to this day? Still there. Right it's um, I think, from my understanding, is that his show was uh, streamed on RT, but it wasn't sort of you know he doesn't work for RT um obviously he can't even be streamed on RT now because it's banned in um in Britain That's terrible um so oh yeah, I, think I think it's think gone you... it's gone I think I've just I'm just on it now I'm just on his thing I think it's no longer there anymore is uh it used to be like just here in the just yeah, here in this oh, white space so it looks like it, it's it's gone they've uh they've removed his uh Russian affiliated, whatever it was, uh, whatever the nonsense it was. But that really is terrible. I was speaking to some of the pro, you know, on, on Saturday, you spoke at the uh, Not Our War uh, organization, uh, you know, uh, a rally. And I was speaking to some of the pro Ukraine people, and they were saying, oh, well, one of the people you work with, you know, Anthony Weber, he, uh, he works, he, he gets paid by RT. And I went, I went, well, so what if he does? What's, what's, the, what's the issue? Like, do you think it, I think it's it's very bad that uh, that that RT UK has been cancelled. Like, do you think that's do you think that's right? And it goes, oh well, they breached Ofcom regulations. And I went, what what Ofcom regulations? There, there was no Ofcom regulation breached because we all know that the state, like Ofcom, is the state, is the UK state, right? It is yeah. a super regulator. And if they're saying that this that that Ofcom regulations are breached, then what is it? Is it simply yeah. that, oh, it's disinformation? Well, how do you know it's disinformation? I want to hear, I want because we're bombarded constantly with Ukraine propaganda nonstop, yeah? From every yeah. from every single, even GB News, right? Even GB News does Ukraine propaganda. Yeah. Like, they're, they're pro for it. Yeah. I want to hear the other side. I want to hear yeah. one channel, in this case, RT UK. I want to hear what they're saying because I'm only exactly. hearing one side of the story. I mean, what, what do you think about that? Do you think... Do you think we live this UK that we live in now? Do you think we 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 live in this kind of Orwellian state right now that they can do so? I mean, what's what's your opinion on that? RT being cancelled, etc. Yeah, I mean, absolutely agree with you. I mean, I you mentioned earlier about you know socialism and a nanny state and authoritarianism, but I mean, what are we living in now? Um, you know, we can't drive our car on the road. We can't hear the other side of the story in the media. Um, you know, we don't have uh, options to vote for that, you know, they're all, as Peter Ford said, war, more war, or the most war. Uh, we don't live in a democracy. We don't have freedom of speech. We don't have freedom of assembly. These, nope. uh, you know, it's it's all sort of notional at the moment. It doesn't exist in reality. Um, I think that the banning of RT is uh, really worrying uh, and worrying how many people cheered it along. Um, the diversity of voices, opinions in the media is so narrow that, you know, it's it's changed quite dramatically in the last couple of years. Um, I mean, I was watching, do you know, you know, Matt Walsh from uh, The Daily Wire? I was watching yep. him because he has been demonetized on YouTube and he has That's close right. to followers. <coughs> and it's all because, you know, they challenge the, the status quo. They they challenge, you know, the accepted sort of mainstream media opinion. And, um, that's, you know, it's frightening. It's, you know, we're told that these private corporations like YouTube, they're just, you know, you can you can uh, post whatever you want there. But ultimately, you know, they are following 
Uh, they make up their own rules as they go along. They also uh, work closely with the state to manage, you know, what's acceptable sort of opinion to be heard in public because they don't want people to become outraged and decide that, you know, they want to change things. Um, so, you know, they're really trying to suppress different voices. They don't want uh, people to know that there are others out there who agree with them. Um, and they definitely don't want you to think that there's anything you can do about it either. Um, so, yeah, yeah I think... It's, you know, it's why channels like this are so important. It's why, you know, the the age of social media in some ways has been a disaster for us. But in others, it's, you know, really allowed us to, um, you know, form this sort of massive independent media. And uh, it's great that there are so many different channels who are sharing, you know, really different opinions and that, you know, we're all able to talk to each other. And, um, you know, it's the only way to to share our views, to, to meet other people who also share our views and um, for people to, to learn more and hopefully come to change their mind uh, once they, as you say, wake up from that sort of, you know, decades-long uh, propaganda programming that we're all subject to from uh, from birth, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, this is, I just put the footage up of uh, you speaking at the Not Our uh, War. There's Anthony Weber. Do you know Anthony Weber by chance? He's just, he's a chap. Uh, met him on Saturday. Lovely guy. Um, we yeah, had that's a... right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were you were sitting with him. Yeah, of course you met him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean that. I, I, I honestly think. <coughs> sorry, I've got I've got a bit of a um. I'm really a bit run down at the moment. Um, I think it was the the five the the five days of adrenaline. Plus, I had that event I I done independently as well in the evening. Remember, I said I'll oh, come along if you want. But I didn't yeah, know you lived yeah. in Berman at the time. Um, this sort of stuff that's not our war. Uh, there needs to be more protests like this. Like, let's not make it a one-off uh, event. Let's yeah. like take this. Like, I mean, you live in Birmingham, for example. That's you know a big city. Birmingham is. We should have a not our war one there. Do you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. You know, I don't care what the name is. Whether it's not our war, whether it's no to NATO, whether it's whatever it is. Yeah. It's like they should have more of these, and let's just yeah. not because. You know that's how that's how you you grow these sort of organizations by having regular ones. You know, yeah, you won't get big numbers at first, but then once it gets into people's subconscious, they'll go, yeah. "Oh, hang on a minute, not our war or whatever." No to NATO, they'll start getting that, and it goes, "Yeah, yeah, the anti-Ukraine thing, right?" Or the anti-war thing. They'll they'll probably say anti-Ukraine at first, but you know, we're against the military-industrial complex. You know, because the only people who win at the end of the day. They don't really give yeah. the, the the military industrial complex don't care what the country is, who what the two countries are at war. As long as they're getting sold arms deals and these yeah. and your taxpayers' money is funding it forever, they don't care what the geographical location of it is. But that was a great I was listening to you. I was uh, I was somewhere over to the um to the right over there. But I was listening to it. I thought it was a really good speech that you gave. Um and it was really good as you for to come out as well because it's easy for the smears that you get from people, oh, you're just far right, you know, because you 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 agree with peace. Do you know what I mean? They go, like far right has just become this anything I disagree with, you're in the far right category. You know, they go, I believe in freedom, far right. I believe in peace, far right. Um, yeah. I believe, um, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. I mean, what, what's your opinion on like the, the trans stuff, for example? Like, if I say, oh, I think a man is a woman, or whatever, yeah. I think that that's that's just a man. Pretending to you be know, a woman. Oh, that's far right. Well, what's, do you have an opinion on that? The I have very on strong on this. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, tell us yours and then tell us if there. I imagine the party doesn't have a policy on everything because that would be, it would go on forever. But what, what, what's your opinion on that? Position on it. And, um, you know, we support women's rights and we think that, you know, a man can't become a woman just by saying so and vice versa. And, um, you know, as a woman myself, you know, um, I think that it's insulting. Um, it's really stripping back, you know, the the progress that women have made over the last de few decades. And um, I think the treatment of people like uh, is it Parker, uh, Posey Parker is yep. just insane. Um, and, you know, I feel like we're living in this alternative reality where we all have to pretend that, you know, things are really complicated when they're really actually quite simple. It's like, you know, if you have a penis, you're a man. If you have a vagina, you're a woman. And that's, you know, there's nothing to it more complicated than that. 
Um, and, you know, people always trying to um, obfuscate, I suppose, and, you know, talk about, oh, what about this? Or what about this? What about this? But it, it doesn't change the the crux of, of the matter. It's that there are men and there are women, and we can basically always tell what someone is by looking at them. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a man in a dress will never be a woman. A man cannot know what it feels like to be a woman. So how can they, you know, say they feel like a woman? Yeah, vice versa. Yeah. You know, um, I'm I've been called like a fascist for for having these views, which is quite hilarious as someone as a socialist. Um, you know, our our party has been publicly criticised by other sort of <laughs> left parties. They've called us transphobic, uh, homophobic, yeah. all of these. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's just insane. I mean. I mean, you've got you've got people. I mean, I know obviously you've got you've got people like George Gadaway, who is renowned for being a person of the left, you know, and and all of that. And then you've got people like Pierce Corbin as well, who again, you know, brother of Jeremy, you know what I mean? Like you've got all of these people, and they're called far right. I mean, Sadiq Khan yeah. recently at a one of his uh, town hall meetings in the Elin one, the sort of infamous one now. He he called. Basically, anyone who opposes the ULES extension, uh, yeah. the ULES expansion, is is aligning themselves with far right Nazis. And then the guy yeah. leading, because he was addressing the chants outside the building, you could hear it through the inside of the building. And he's going, "Oh, the, those people are far right, you know, Nazis or whatever, whatever, the, uh, whatever, whatever buzzword bingo he said." Um, yeah. And it's just like literally Pierce Corbyn is leading the chants. <laughs> you look yeah. like. What are you talking about, Sadiq? I mean, what what's what what is uh what does the does the uh, Workers Party have a policy on the uh, on the ULES expansion, for example? Like, what, what's what's your opinion on that and the parties? Yeah. Um, I mean, I well, I'm based in Birmingham, so I mean, we uh, we oppose the there's a clean air zone As, here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. Eight pound to drive into the city center, and like I drive an old, old diesel car, so basically I can't drive into the city center because I'm not paying eight quid. <laughs> but um, you know, it's made the council millions and millions of pounds over the two years that it's been imposed. It doesn't reduce the traffic. The traffic just drives around <laughs> the city center. It only yeah. increases the traffic, um, and it basically just means that those who have nice new fancy, you know, electric vehicles or whatever can drive in for free. Um, and those of us who can't afford those are, are stuck in the sort of periphery. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, those kinds of uh, policies are thoroughly anti-working class. And I mean, they don't they don't even solve the problem that they purport to solve, which is, you know, get stopping pollution, stopping uh, congestion. Um, all it does is just increase the the number of Ubers, the number of delivery drivers. Um, you know, the people who tend to support these uh, schemes are the ones who are basically sitting at home all day receiving their Amazon parcels and getting their Uber Eats delivery. They're the ones causing a lot more congestion than, you know, uh, old, old Joe Bloggs trying to get to work in it. Um, but, no, I'm, you know, we, we're... Well, I'm personally against all of these kind of policies, and I think that they should all be scrapped. Um, and we want to improve public transport. Uh, if you want to reduce congestion, make public transport cheaper, easier to use, more accessible. Um, you know, in Birmingham, we don't even have like a metro system. It's just buses. Um, and it's about twice as expensive in Birmingham as it is in London to get the bus, for example. So, you know, mm. we have a policy of, uh, free bus travel for children to reduce congestion. You know, we want uh, fully integrated public transport that's, you know, either free or incredibly cheap. And, you know, instead of trying to do the use the stick, how about have the carrot, you know, instead? Yeah. I was going to say, obviously, the, the local elections are, are currently on. Um, I believe it's the, is it the... It's usually held on a Thursday, so that usually it's the first week usually. First of May, uh, isn't it? What is it? Sorry, say again. The first Thursday in May is election day. Yeah, so it will probably be on the fourth of May. May the fourth be with you. Uh, it's be on the fourth of May. Do you have any candidates standing in uh, in the local elections? 
Um, we have one down south in Torquay. Um, I stood as a candidate in uh, in Kings Heath last year, but um, yeah, there's no no elections taking place in Birmingham this year. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on elsewhere in the party, so I couldn't speak uh, on that on that question. But um, you know, I highly encourage anyone out there who uh, is awake, as you like to say, um, to go and stand as a candidate, either independent or with a party, because I think it's really important, even if you don't get that many votes, but it's just good to go and talk to people and, and try and convince them of your your ideas. I mean, I only got about 120 votes or something, but um, still, good. You know, still, yeah, still, still right. worthwhile experience, yeah. Yeah, that's good, that's good. I'm just looking at, uh, I mean, we're talking about, just to bounce back to, uh, this is just on the Workers uh, Workers' Party website, um, you know, this past Saturday, the Workers' Party of Britain was invited to speak at the No More Well, it's, it's actually not our war, but it doesn't matter. No More War rally called uh, called by David Clues of UNN. The rally had a number of speakers, including the former British ambassador Peter Ford, UK column contributor uh, Niall McRae, and well-known activist Peter uh, Piers Corbyn. There's always discussion among left-wing and principled people as to the optics of working with people whom we <laughs> hold disagreements. Some well meaning uh, people think that attending and participating outside the usual small circle might be a compromise on our principle that it would mean we were supporting racists, etc. I mean, I, I, I know what you, I know what this, what you're getting at here on this, on this article, whoever put it up. Um, we are clear that we took the easy decision to speak to the crowd of people about uh, why we were, why we want Britain to withdraw from NATO and how we must work together to achieve this aim. It's as simple as that. We must speak to people who don't all already agree with our 10-point program or else what are we doing? Yeah, I totally agree. I thought that was very decent of uh, workers of the Workers' Party to actually turn up as well as Peter Ford. Uh, there was also yeah. a random chap who just wanted to speak uh, from Stop the War. Who, again, we probably, I, I personally probably wouldn't agree with economically, <laughs> but... Do you know what I mean? It's good that we can unite on this. That's why I, I, I keep saying that perhaps we need to do a kind of road show tour of this, yeah, of this, and in order because you know just having one and then never doing it again that's that that just doesn't work. Things like that don't work. I think we need to have regular ones. Like I said, like you're in Birmingham, that's a big city. Um, you know, David Clues is in Glasgow. Where's 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 uh, where's George Gallagher? Where does he live now? Is he is he live in England or in, is it Scotland? We held a we held a rally in Glasgow um, <coughs> earlier in April for the for No to NATO, um, you know, which were about a hundred people there. Um, but as you said, it's like it's important to have these things happening regularly because you need yeah. that snowball effect. You can't just have you know, one rally, bring people in, you need them to keep attending things and keep contributing and organising things. Otherwise, you know, they just go back to go back home and, and sort of forget about it. It's, um, you know, we need to, I'm all up for like a, a road show for continuing, um, you know, working together. As I said in that article, you know, the question of, of war is, you know, the number one question of today. Um, yeah, because everything else is secondary. If you know, there's a, a nuclear escalation, isn't it? It's like you can't can't argue about pronouns if you know there's nuclear bombs dropping. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's what they want, Lauren. I mean, what what do you think the bigger agenda is here? Like, do you think that they want? Could, could, hit, hit, let me just for your answer. Here's my kind of take on it, and I could be wrong. You know, is that I think that the establishment. They're losing grip of power. Yeah. Sorry, you're just cutting out a bit. They lose. Sorry, Sean, I can't really hear you. It's cutting out a bit.
think there might have been some technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's going on. Shawnee, coming back. I'm not sure if this is still going live or whether there's anyone listening, but while I'm waiting for Sean to come back, I just want to plug um, this pamphlet that the Workers' Party has just published. It's called The Ukraine War, The Origins of the Special Military Operation. You can purchase it on our website. It's uh, £5, including delivery, um, and it's got some really good um, sort of background on the war. Um, and it quotes heavily from this report from the RAND Corporation, which I think is really interesting, called Extending Russia. Um, and basically, they've been plotting for six years how they can weaken, uh, weaken Russia and, and use and how they're going to use Ukraine to do so. Um, so I highly recommend everyone uh, take a look at that pamphlet. Um, I think Sean's coming back in, so I'll take this opportunity to also plug a few other things. Uh, one is a petition that we are, a parliamentary petition that we are campaigning on, which is Britain's withdrawal from NATO. Um, so we want to invoke Article 13 of the NATO Treaty uh, and withdraw Britain from that alliance uh, because it's bad for the people of Britain, it's bad for the people of the world. And, um, you know, the first step to weakening NATO and weakening imperialism is to withdraw from NATO. Sorry, Sean, I've just kind of hijacked the show. Just... <laughs> do you know what? Thank you. Very, that's very professional for you to uh, do that, actually. Yeah, just carry on with uh, just a mysterious fault like that. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I do apologise, guys. It just went off. Um, not sure whether it was... I was so, just saying that what did I mean did you explain what your opinion of it was the question I asked No I've been plugging my um our party's pamphlet on the Ukraine war but um, <laughs> that, that that is that is brilliant that you can do that though that just shows that you are a high functioning um uh business person that you can do that well done for that a lot of people will sort of freak out then if that happens um, but thank you very much for for doing that, uh, for taking over in a way until I passed out, until uh, I came back on again. But I was, I was just saying, I was just saying, um, what do you think this is all about? Because I, I personally think that the establishment, whatever you want to call it, they're losing control of the narrative, the the conversation, whatever it is, and they need a big war, a distraction, because wars in themselves, like World War One and World War Two, they were essentially great resets. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? It's just like they need a World War Three or some big conflict in order to distract people and and also, you know, get a lot of people killed as well, obviously, because that's what war produces, unfortunately. It's what, what do you think? Like, is that is that just me being a being a conspiracy theorist? Like, what's your opinion on that? I mean, I don't think you're too far off the mark. I think, you know, the system, I mean, I would take a, a more economic analysis and the the system of capitalism is kind of reached its, you know, almost a breaking point. I do think that we are seeing like a total decline of Western empire. Um, it can't keep up with the profitability of, you know, China's industrial strength, for example. Um, and, you know, the Western economies are weakening. And part of, well, I would say part of, you know, the COVID sort of agenda and since then with the war is to cannibalize markets so that they can reset or relaunch them as you mm -hmm. um and because our understanding of, of profit is that the rate of profit will decline over time and um you can basically come to a point where you're producing all of these things but they're not making the profit that you used to be able to get from them because things become cheaper labor becomes more expensive etc um and you need to do something to basically start you know start afresh and and that's you know that's part of this part of it is you know to rape and pillage resources from uh different parts of the world so we've seen it in libya syria iraq now russia you know maybe even sudan as we speak um and you know that's for for the west to accumulate you know resources that they can then use to sell for profits um, part of it is also to crush other powerful countries that can 
resist or threaten uh, you know, Western hegemony. So Russia is a massive power. It has a nuclear arsenal and it also has a history of, you know, standing up to uh, standing up to the West. Um, and China, you know, has been rising peacefully for, for decades and it's a massive country, over a billion people. Um, it used to allow itself to be bullied and it won't allow itself to be bullied and overpowered anymore. So the the West is kind of at... Uh, a point where you know they either have to have to go to war and um, try and destroy these powers or they will succumb to them um, not because I think Russia or China are out to you know uh, wage war on on the US or the EU for example but because mm. their economic might is such that you know the West is losing its place in the world and um, I also have to agree that I think there is, you know, a lot of Malthusian sort of agenda happening. Um, and, you know, we've Boris Johnson's father himself is, you know, a, an open Malthusian. Um, what is that? Sorry. Sorry. What, what, what is that? Um, can you just enlighten you know, like, me in the audience? Sort of depopulation agenda. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know what? I was tiptoeing around that. I didn't think you would uh, you would know about that. I was I won't bother saying depopulation. It might it might um it might it might make you think that we're conspiracy theorists. Go on, go for it, continue. I can call that myself too, it's all good. Um so I mean Malthusian is, you know, uh, this guy named Malthus two hundred years ago. Um, maybe a bit more than that. He was writing about how the world is overpopulated and that's what causes poverty and only and if only there were fewer working people, then everyone would be wealthy and live a brilliant life and blah blah blah. But we all know that's not true. Um, you know, there's at that point in time there was I think one or two billion people on earth. Um, and they were saying the world was overpopulated then. Well we now have eight to nine billion and you know we're still, you know, there's still enough for everyone, you know, if it was shared sort of around a bit better. Um, and so part of, you know, the the desire for population control or, or smaller populations is that, you know, there's not as many people there to, to organise and, and fight back. They're easier to control. Um, and, you know, there's just... It's just easier for the ruling elite to manage if there's fewer of us, if we're weaker, if we're, you know, in a position of um, despair, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, see it all across, you know, wealthy sort of developed countries. The fertility rate is dropped. Um, people are having smaller and smaller families. This is a, it's a crisis. It's, um, you know, imagine in two generations, if, you know, people are only having one or zero children, like the population will just completely collapse and um, we can't yep. continue, we can continue on with the same sort of kind of society that we have now if, you know, we have uh, such a, a crash in the population. And I was really um, shocked, actually, on Saturday, I saw some people walking around with actual population control flags, urging people to have smaller families to let nature in, which is quite sinister um you know is, you can yeah. still population and, and live in harmony with nature um and humans are a part of nature and um you know i want people to i want the population to grow and um and build upon all of the sort of progress that we've made over the last hundred years not to you know wilt away collapse and um and find ourselves in a weak position yeah i agree um, Laura, I'm going to let you go shortly, and I'll let you finish off whatever um, you were you were plugging as well. Um, <laughs> but just a little yeah. few quick questions um, for I know I, I think I know the answer to these, but it'd be quite interesting to hear your your perspective on it. Um, so, do you think someone's asked? Uh, Rotherman's in the chat has gone. Um, do you do you think uh, Jeremy Corbyn will join the Workers' Party? GB like what? And now, obviously, now you have Diane Abbott, who's had the, she's basically sitting as an independent MP now. Um, mm. Do you think that uh, any of those two will perhaps join the Workers' Party, for example? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just no. <laughs> yeah. no. Which, um, would, I, would, but, would George like them to be in the party? <laughs> I got a feeling no. <laughs> if, what? Go on. If 
to join the Workers' Party because they agree with our policies and our principles, then, you know, we would welcome them with open arms. Uh, if they came in to try and sabotage it, well, no. But, you know, these... These people have uh, been Labour Party, you know, members and uh, politicians their whole lives. And I think they really agree with the purpose of the Labour Party, which is to keep the working class down. And, um, you know, they're welcome to stay there or, you know, they've lost their wit. But I just think they look quite, especially Corbyn, I, I think it's just a bit sad that He's been treated so poorly by his own party, but he's still so desperate to stay. It's a bit like Stockholm syndrome, you know. He where people... Well, he, he does he does sit as an independent MP now, and from the way that he's going around, I think he's looking to stand um, in Islington North again um, as the as the MP. But I was thinking mm. either. I think more likely he'll just simply stand as a independent MP, you know, and then Starmer. Will put in a uh, as George Gadaway says, he's he's Tony Blair Mark II minus the charisma Keir Starmer mm-hmm. is. Um, but Starmer will probably put a Labour candidate in to try and beat uh, Jeremy Corbyn, or will Jeremy Corbyn create his own party? And if they do, Lauren, I'm going to put money on this. Yeah, I've got the name of the party. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to yeah. bet if Corbyn does create a party, if Jeremy Corbyn does create a party, he will call it. Solidarity, that's what you'll call it. Solidarity. That I, could, I, I, that's my money. If I, if he does, I think it's more likely though he'll stand as an independent MP. But I don't know. I mean, he's got that organisation, the truth, the truth and justice one, or whatever it's called. He could technically turn that into a party if he wanted to. But I don't know. I don't know. I think um, you know, starting a, a party from scratch is a lot harder than what. Oh yeah. You know. Even with a big name, you know, like Jeremy Corbyn, um, because I think ultimately a lot of the people who supported him are not going to be the ones out there doing the groundwork to actually organise, you know, a new party. And uh, a lot of people just like to consume things on media, and like things and share things. But whether they're actually willing to go out and, and do the work is another question. Um, but I think he's he's kind of a bit past it now to, to start his new party. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, possibly. I've got a question on the screen here, Lauren. It says uh, from Ferdo of Lambert, Lauren, did George manage to quit the fags? Yeah. <laughs> did, yeah, did so I never seen him smoke a cigarette, so um, he must have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never yeah. seen him smoke either. He, I've never seen him outside a building smoking. So last year, so um, I've also managed to quit the fags. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done, Lauren. Well done for that. But anyway, Lauren, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, is there anything yeah. you want to say finally to you want to continue whatever you were doing when I was when I disappeared shortly? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Go, tell us got any final parting words. Go for it, Lauren. Yeah, so, um, you know, just the, the pamphlet, maybe you could share the link in your Telegram chat or something, but we're selling this pamphlet on the um, special military operation in Ukraine on the Workers' Party website. Um, we've also got our parliamentary petition going about Britain's withdrawal from NATO. Um, and can I ask that people please follow the Workers' Party Telegram channel? Um, there, there's a lot of videos and a lot of articles sort of coming out, which we think, you know, your audience might be interested in. And, um, yeah, just uh, keep keep up the good work. And thank you so much for, for having us on. And hopefully you'll invite me back again soon. Yep, yeah, I will. Uh, no doubt we will. Thank you very much. You did a great speech as well. Maybe we, we make this sort of a regular thing or something like that. But thank you very much, Lauren. Have a good Thanks. weekend and yeah. good luck whenever yeah. I see you next. Take care. See you later. Thanks.